Now this is the continuation of the useful structure uh, lectures that we are giving you. Now it is uh, on part of the team. It is uh, the honor of uh, Dr. Usman and myself to present you with the useful structure clinic and its audit. Now just starting off with the history of the clinic. It is one of the. It is the oldest specialist clinic started in this in the 70s in, in SIUT and it was that back then known as the dilatation clinic. Uh, most of the stars and the senior faculty have had their their share in the dilatation clinic and it's one of the most uh, one of the favorite clinics of the seniors now this is the current functioning of the clinic we have our structure opening on uh, tuesday and then we have a dedicated operation theater which has now expanded to the uh, to maranessa and ed as well thursday in the old building and two ot's uh, in maranessa on wednesday and fridays and uh, we, we get an OT in ED on Friday as well. Now, currently, the team members led by Professor Manzoor Hussain and under the uh, supervision of Dr. Saeed Abdi, we have Dr. Tanzil Usman and myself. And then, in addition, we have one senior registrar and three residents who accompany us in the operation theatres. Now, since it's one of the oldest uh, uh, clinics uh, in the last ten, in the last uh, since 2010, we've seen about 52 uh, 52,000 patients. You can see that from 2010, we started off with 3,000 uh, 3, patients, and up to 2018, the population increased many folds up to 8,000 patients. We perform a variety of uh, structured surgeries, and over the past uh, eight year, over the past eight years, 5,000 or roughly 6,000 surgeries have been done. Mostly, they were uroscopies and dilatations and DBIU initially. But then as we progressed, laser utrotomies and urethroplasties also came into the uh, scenario. Now coming but coming into a more focused view, if we could, if we look at our performance in the last one and a half years, it is where, in the, why I talk about the last one and a half years is because this is where we uh, we had a very dedicated team who, uh, who dedicatedly followed the structure OPD and the operation theater. And it is because of this team that we have we had an increase in the performance of uh, the operation theaters and the OPD. Now, you can this is the population that has visited in the last one year. There were seven thousand five hundred eighty-seven patients, about roughly about six hundred thirty-two patients visited every month. Increased visits have been seen in the summer time and less in the winter time. We can we receive patients from all over Pakistan. The majority is from Sindh, 67%. Uh, from 32% are from Karachi and 35% from the interior of the Sindh. Others, we even drain the northern areas, about 1% of the patient. And the second to follow is Punjab. 21% of the patients also come from there. Now, you can see mostly the patients are from Karachi, but there are, there are many populations that are, that are being drained from all over Sindh, as you can see from the graph. From Punjab, everywhere, uh, the major cities, from even from Lahore, which do house uh, one of the one of the uh, tertiary care hospitals, but due to probably la lack of facilities of urethroplasty or management of urethral structures, they come to SIUT for their uh, for their management. Even from Peshawar, Swat, and Muzaffarabad, you can see that even though they have a tertiary care center, but people still come to us. Majority of the patients that that are coming to us are in the, are young patients. They fall between the ages, mostly between the ages of 11 and 40 years old, and uh, these are the ages in which they, are, they have an active lifestyle and are more prone to traumas. And you can see there's another peak in about after 50 years of age in which they have post URP bladder neck contractures of, or strictures as a result of uh, of endoscopic procedures in this old age. Now, we have we, the number of cases uh, that we perform in uh, SIUT Karachi is about 322 in the last one year, and in MMC we had 55 procedures. But contrary, in contradiction, the major operative cases are more in MMC as compared to the center, 143 in the last one year, and MMC 173. Uh, it's, uh, 173 because we have uh, uh, more simpler cases in MMC. And uh, they are they're shorter, and we have more because of the shorter duration of the operative time. 
a more number of population is being done there. And furthermore, we have uh, two OTs in Marinesa, two days of OTs in Marinesa. Uh, the etiology, uh, the etiology that uh, that we receive most commonly, they are uh, they are the road traffic accident and followed then uh, road traffic accident followed by uh, strictures as a result of UTI and then stradal injuries. So following this pie chart, you can see that we receive a variety of etiological uh, causes for the for the urethral stricture, which we have to manage. Now, the most of the common regions of the of the uh, of the urethra that is affected the most commonly is the anterior urethra that we are dealing with about 69 percent of the base uh, of the patients, but PFUDD falls second in line with 17 percent. Pan urethral stricture is about 5% and those patients who have failed the DVIU, uh, DVIU procedure, they are about 9% to undergo then follow up uh, urethroplasties. Just uh, for my junior colleagues an introduction, uh, rather than a, uh, a photographic review of what we are doing. This is the most common procedure on the, on, you can see on your, uh, on your left. That is an EPA in which we transact the urethra and primary anastomosis uh, that was explained by Professor Manzu yesterday in a parachute technique. Then the another one is the non-transacting EPA in which we do not uh, dis dismember the urethra, but rather we do a stricture we do a stricturotomy and place and place a graft over the stricture. The most common answer that the juniors ask or get confused is what is the what is dorsal inlay or dorsal onlay. So if you can see it in this picture that if it is a dorsal onlay, that means the urethra has been moved to the side and a graft has uh, and a graft has been placed over the over, over the bed of the urethra on the spongiosum, and then the stricture is then attached to this graft as a dorsal. But as a dorsal inlay, what happens that you open up the urethra and you open up the stricture, you place a graft on the dorsal aspect of the urethra, attach the urethra and then close the urethra over it. So this is an inlay where you, where you put a graft in the urethra. Ventral onlay is the opposite of dorsal onlay. You put the graft uh, on the ventral side of the urethra and lateral onlay as the name says that you perform the stricture otomy on the lateral side and put a graft. Now, augmented anastomosic urethroplasty in which we, we, trans, we, we transect the urethra but we uh, anastomose one of the valve it's like for example in this picture we we anastomose the posterior valve uh, primarily and the, and the residual defect is overcome by a graft and because and as the graft has been placed this is known as an augmented anastomosis that is we are augmenting the space between the uh, structure now, these are the procedures. You can see that we are doing most. We are doing a variety of procedures using grafts and primary repair. Most commonly, it is EPA. About 158 cases that were done in the last one year. But the variety does not end. It does not end here. We are doing a number of dorsal onlays and ventral onlays as well, going right up to non-transacting uh, urethroplasties and and urethrostomies. In addition, we are also doing hypospadias repairs and sometimes. We get very complex structures in which we have to do a combined onlay or inlay or a combined uh, EPA with a uh, with the onlay grafting as well. So these come under the combination of combined urethroplasties. Now we use a variety of grafts as substitution. The most commonly uh, we are using is is buccal mucosa graft, but now we are uh, we are increasing our armamentarium to now to buccal as well as uh, labial as well as lingual. So we are going towards oral mucosal grafts and it is one of the it is one of the best grafts uh, BMG because of low morbidity at the harvest site and good outcomes at the stricture site. But we also use penile skin flaps and dorsal transverse flaps as well. So in the first in the pictures A and B you can see that we are, we are taking a buccal mucosal graft you can see the harvest site, and we apply it on the uh, apply it on the structure. This is the dorsal penile graft, and on the fourth picture, you can see this is a dorsal island flap that we take from the skin and apply it to the structurotomy that we've done. Now, coming to regional wise, 
uh, in the penile urethra mostly we are mostly it, what we are doing is a dorsal inlet urethroplasty and it is and mixed by dorsal inlays lateral onlays as well and even augmented urethroplasties we have even performed a number of non transecting uh, urethroplasties as well and we have even used or andy's penile skin flap as shown in the picture before and we've done these two of these cases as well in the last one year a total of 42 cases now the bulbar urethra is one of is the commonest uh, is one of the commonest regions that are presenting to us epas is is the procedure of choice in the bulbar urethra and about 78 uh, major 78 cases have been done in the last one year but many ep but many apas are prone to failure so we have even uh, handled the complex failures by doing the redo APS as well. Further, even more complex uh, structural plasty such as the bulbar prosthetic APS that have been done and the use of grafts are also in major. About, but most commonly we use a dorsal only graft in this region, about 12%, about 12 of the cases. Pelvic fracture, useful disruption, defect or injury. Uh, in most, we are doing, uh, we are doing mostly a bulbar prosthetic EPA, but of course this depends on the region of, uh, of the structure and the severity of the injury. So most com we have done about 24 cases of bulbar prosthetic EPAs followed by primary EPAs in 16 of the cases. We even use graft in this region as dorsal and, uh, and as onlays and inlays as well. And youthful structures have been met with STDs, with, tuberculo with tuberculosis, and they are a great challenge. And we've taken up the challenge. We've we've used mostly graft in this region. A very uh, there's uh, particularly in these in pan youthful structures, we most commonly do two stage uh, two stage procedures in which we in one we open up the urethra and apply a graft, and in the second stage we tubularize the uh, penile urethra and uh, pro provide the conduit for the transport. Uh, we use the grafts here as well, dorsal in, uh, right, dorsal inlay and dorsal onlays as well. But many of the cases, they, be, uh, they are unsalvageable and two of these cases are on our perineal urethrostomies. Now, after all these, uh, of all this hard work, this is the outcome that we've assessed in the, in the follow-up of the patients in one year. Now, outcome was def outcome is def uh, we have kept our definition as outcome as having a Q max more than 10 ml per second in this patient and who has been symptomatically feels much better than than before surgery. So, alhamdulillah, 158 patients had imp had improved outcomes in the, in our, after the surgery, but unfortunately, in 24 24 cases in the last one year, they were they were uh, unsatisfied and they did not have an improved Q max. And four of the patients we had either we have kept them on CSIC, uh, CIC. Twelve patients, uh, twelve patients were undocumented. What I mean by undocumented is that we have a performer in our OPD that is given to every patient preoperatively. Uh, it is filled out during the operation. It is assessed and postoperatively how the patient feels and, and what are the subjective feelings of the patient and what are these and what are the follow-up uh, QMAX of the patient. So, out of these 12 uh, performers, they were undocumented on how their outcome was. We didn't meet with a lot of, we did meet with complications and these complications varied from, the most common complication is the erectile dysfunction, which is the commonest complaint of the population, so it is young. And the erectile dysfunction is a challenge that we have to meet. For them, uh, the second is recurrence of the uh, is recurrence of the structure, but it is only in about 16% of the cases in last one year. Another challenge is the infertility that is that uh, that is being met. This is not percent. This is number. This, these are numbers, sir. These are not percent. These are numbers. Now, if we analyze our complications according to the Clavian Dindo classification. <laughs> Most of our complications they are falling into grade two. In grade two, in which uh, grade two because they require uh, therapy for erectile dysfunction, infertility, and they require pharmacological intervention. But the second, the second most commonest uh, class uh, uh, complication that we are that they are falling into grade three for about 26% of the cases in which we required endoscopic 
either DVIUs, laser utrotomies uh, for the for the, for recurrence of restrictures. So they're about 26 percent. And we we have not and none of our none of our cases have gone into grade four or five claim into uh, classification of complications. Now we, uh, over the past one years, we have progressed in our practice of stricture management. We have uh, now made the use of sonourethrograms to assess the severity and the depth of the uh, depth of the stricture and spongiofibrosis prior to surgery. To and now we have even uh, progressed our the armamentarium of surgery to performing the uh, transabdominal perineal approach known as the PAPA procedure. We are we uh, tried using longer segments of oral mucosal grafts. The longest that we've used is about 16 centimeters. Now we are going towards vessel sparing urethroplasties to save the patients from post-operative erectile dysfunction. And intersplenteric urethroplasty is being is now being done in complex structures. Our further plan is to ensure that the stricture clinic as a rehabilitation center for the young uh, for the patients, but because it is important that we treat the patient as a whole. Uh, one of the, uh, I remember a story of a patient who was, uh, who got married about 20 days back and while he was going to the office, he had a road traffic accident, he had a pelvic fracture and uh, we were treating him with the diagnosis of PFUDI. And uh, Alhamdulillah, his uh, stricture was repaired, but the next problem was that he had erectile dysfunction. Now a man of such, such a scenario requires to be treated wholly both psychologically and for his erectile dysfunction and infertility so that he can carry on his life. So we have we have started the use of phosphodiesterase inhibitors. We, uh, we give the patient after the repair of the strictures and the outcome has been improved. We start them off with phosphodiesterase inhibitors. If improvement does not occur with the oral, then we've seen that many of the patients uh, have some uh, erectile functioning by the use of intracorporeal injections. We was, uh, to analyze fertility, we are also, also doing testicular biopsies and vasographies in our operation theatres to assess the conductive failure in infertility. Coming to the publication, this be the youth structure has been honoured by presenting a number of publications in honoured journals, and there are five publications that have been done by our, by our seniors that range uh, that range from the from the higher hierarchy down to Professor Manzoor. But the publications do not end here. Our residents are also busy in research work and we have five uh, research work that are currently in process that have been given to various residents who will be presenting them in their upcoming FCPS exams. So, yes sir, please. So, if you, uh, the first one that was done was by Uthor Structure Disease 100 cases that was done in, back in 1997. Then in 2008, then 2010, and you can see that majority of the cases, or majority of the publications are in, are in uh, honored journals. This one, the fifth one is our recent publication. Seven years. Just another slide, sir. Okay, this is our future planning, the next step that we would like to embark on. Uh, we would like to uh, look towards a flexible cystoscope, and then we would like to join with the uh, with the radiology department for the penile Doppler ultrasound for the treatment of erectile dysfunction. Right. Uh, excellent presentation. I must say thank you. Thank you. And uh, I think it, uh, this presentation has raised a lot of questions, a lot of questions, and a lot of uh, good sense also uh, for, for, uh, for someone like, uh, for instance, me, who is not part of this uh, group. But uh, from the uh, from the sidelines, if, uh, I may say. What I can see is a lot of activity, but this activity has to be again uh, looked into time and again, and that is the purpose of audit. That you 
always come up with some question and then you answer the question and you come up with another set of questions. So this is, this is the way uh, things should improve. Uh, if you go back to your uh, very first or I think the second or third slide where the demographic or the area, the catchment area. <clears throat> So, uh, we come to uh, our own province. Uh, next slide. Okay. So, uh, in your uh, whole audit, you uh, have mentioned two hospitals, two centers of SIFC. This one and the other one is in Madison. But if you take up, for instance, uh, this is my suggestion, if you take up Hunsa, uh, Sablani Center, because this is the second most common area where the patients are coming. So if uh, they come to Karachi for the purpose of uh, uh, <coughs> then if this thing, because we have got a center and we can manage these things because these are the cases uh, that are electively done, it's not an emergency. So for instance, uh, if uh, for one month you collect your cases and every two months you go with your team over there, uh, be there for two days or three days. It will be a service for those patients because this is very difficult for them to come here. This is just a suggestion. Uh, 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 <coughs> we are planning one uh, session. Okay. Coming on. Because we have got the infrastructure, we have got the team, everything is there, but just we have to make a program. So uh, that is one way of going forward. I think we use that regularly. Sir, uh, if you would allow me, sir, I was in Sakar two weeks back. So this was what I. This is what uh, I discussed with uh, uh, Professor uh, over there, sir. They, we have collected about fifteen patients of stricture urethra in Sakar. And uh, what we and I've talked to the uh, professor, and he is planning that he will collect a number of patients, and then the and he will request the urethroplasty team to be there for say about ten days or fifteen days, and which we will do the and I and I said okay once, and I've gone through those fifteen patients, and uh, they're more or less ready. So uh, and I've left it to the to the uh, at the end of the professor uh, to uh, when he finds it fit. That he will call the team, and uh, we can all uh, three or four of us. We can go there, and we can perform those 15 and 20 surgeries that are there who are waiting for. So this is uh, this has all yeah, on my part. I've done it. So, but <laughs> it, yes. I rather, very frankly speaking, I did not have the courage to say it to the senior. Yes, people, the point go there. You mention more simple cases there. In the beginning, yes, we used to do more simple cases than in the Marunita, but now it is as like in our old building. We used to do all, including EPA, bulboprostatic, and sometimes the combined approach also. Another important point to be think about is if the Marunita timing is less, the Marunita anesthetic is only one, and majority of cases we have one room for open procedures, and even then we perform more in a year. It is not just because of the simplified simplification of the of the disease process or the case. A good administration and good organization of the OT has a main role to doing all that procedure. One surgeon, one anesthetic, one technician, one room can perform four or five cases in a short duration as compared to perform two cases only in our old OT. So there are multi factors for that. So uh, I, I come to this point because uh, I just um, uh, hear this thing uh, because I was not part of in the discussion. But one more senior anesthetist is being enrolled, and he will be available. So there will be a very senior anesthetist, probably on the level of uh, associate professor. So he'll be there uh, in Maranisa, um throughout for the whole day. Very so I, I think then your uh, point to be taken care of. Very taken the standardization of procedure and the standardization of uh, operation data. Yesterday, uh, we were talking about something sir, uh, about the use and availability of bipolar. Unless and until this is made clear to whoever the highest authority that we need these instruments 
they are not only necessary, but they are uh, such an essential thing that we can't do procedures like, for instance, and you have mentioned the electrical dysfunction. Uh, I don't know the exact pathology of erectile dysfunction, but I know one thing that if you do, for instance, vascular sparing surgery, erectile dysfunction will not be there. So, in your whole list of uh, procedures which we have shown in the very, at the very last uh, slides, you have uh, explained that you want to go towards something which is known as vascular sparing surgery. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. So this is one thing which, if done by proper instruments, will always be an easier, easier done than said. So there has to be an obsession again by the team that this is something which is necessary. There is no two ways about it. Then it will be available to you unless and until you put it like this aggressively. Nothing enough for a point. Sir, once you have this create list of the number where you have to, then you essential. And then you can make it. Yes, sir. Yes, for instance, when we were started, we were starting this um, laparoscopy, we made sure that, uh, for instance, this is the uh, paraphernalia or the infrastructure of laparoscopy that on the right hand side, these are the instruments, on the left hand side, these are the instruments. And nobody was allowed to alter this arrangement. For instance, we have to have in the left hand the bipolar instrument, bipolar scissors or bipolar. Um, uh, say uh, forceps, and on the right side, it is necessary for a laparoscopy that harmonic uh, instrument should be there. So this this has to be uh, a part and parcel of standardization of procedure. Again, it has to come from the team. Second thing is uh, you, you have mentioned a lot of procedures that you have been doing for the past many many years. Uh, after audit, there is another step. Another step is standardization of the steps of the procedure. Unless, unless and until that is done, we will not be able to pick up one procedure and say that this is an indication for that procedure. For instance, for anterior uh, uh, strictures, like the strictures, there's a whole list of procedures. If you do one procedure one day and the other procedure the other day, the outcome will be different and the excellence will not come. <laughs> so, uh, what's, what's your opinion about it? For instance, as a center, you are heading the whole thing and you have got the depth of knowledge for structure and other things. If you have a particular area of uh, structure, you can tell procedures that you have to tell procedures. And the whole team should work on it time and again, and then the excellence comes in. The outcome will be better. But we practice the same thing. Uh, like if, 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 if a disease that indicates torsor only, so either that is done by Professor Baldur Sahab or Professor Usman or me or Tandi, we used to follow the same thing because these things are very clear and there is no doubt about that thing. Okay, you may do like this or may like this. So most of the time, all the steps, the basic principles, and the things are there. I must say that. So every day you start teaching them. For Bina, you have listed that the procedure of choice is the last and only for the Bina. If I'm going to be able to become the complete organization of the Bina, then we don't do it in there. So, for the benign infection, yes, uh, if EPA is not indicated and the procedure of choice is lost and changed, uh, and most of the benign infection here in, in our center are post hypospheres. The hypospheres have been repaired in the childhood and now they are coming with the with this uh, institution. So, for benign infection, the loss and delay in the procedure of choice. For that, it's important to have some sort of remove mm -hmm. if necessary. If it, for the burger characteristic test, up to two centimeters or less than two centimeters, the, <coughs> the technique of choice is the TPA, excision and primary rearrangement. Excision and burgo burgo anastasis. And uh, if the stick is more than two centimeters, then the uh, some sort of uh, 
नाम लेगा फ्रंट नाम लेगा और द लेफ्ट नाम लेगा ऑल द थ्री हैव गॉट द सेम रिजल्ट्स इन द लॉन्ग टर्म बट आई पर्सनली थिंक द लास्ट नाम लेगा द बेटर वर्स फॉर द दिस फर्दर इन्वेस्टिगेशन मोर देन टू से and for the posterior thoracic test the epa epa means the excision of the sphincter and perform membrane analysis like what tell you both the pfu excision and perform membrane analysis <coughs> for the simple thoracic test through the simple transperineal tube and uh, then there is the elaborated perineal approach like elaborated perineal approach and so can be the then we need to have a the get tummy and read the simple pain and effort and elaborate pain and effort if we are unable to do this then we there is a combined abdominal pain and effort and if could not do it then of course it is not it's a mainstay it is all which are back here for instance uh, uh, it looks a very complicated sort of uh, disease process for which there are a lot of procedures Done by a lot of people in our team. So, uh, indication for a particular person, for a particular area of urethra, and a ये ये कुछ बात होना चाहिए. Is it a decision? Is it a decision? Actually, the issue is the sensitivity of of all the diagnostic modalities for the structural disease. It's not hundred percent. Many times, what we used to saw on the urethroid or an anterior urethroid is copy, and we made a plan. If this patient need this one, it can be a graft or an EPA. And once you open the patient, the story is totally different. <coughs> Multiple reasons, one of the modalities what we are following in the pre-op phase. Second is the gap from that modality to the patient on the table. Sometimes you have a, a one-year-old urethroid, or sometimes we have a urethroid. Patient has a waiting list for <coughs> four or five months. Then he has some procedure outside, including dilatation and a DEIU. And then he again came to us after five months for the procedure. For that, we took the decision four months back before any instrumentation. So it is very, very difficult to say what exactly this patient needs. This The final decision is on the table. Many times with PFUDD, we explore for an EPA after three months initial phase, and when we open, we found a deep seated abscess there. Mm -hmm. So then you have to modify, you have to open that structure or Johnson's procedure we used to be performed. So it is very difficult. As you say, it is very delicate if we know what thing is required for this thing and we follow. Step by then the expertise is more enhancing, but in structure I don't think so. It is as simple. So coming to your point, it's been said that we did the hypospadias and the structure. The person who is doing hypospadias surgery and the structure surgery should be familiar with many techniques. Mm -hmm. So you have to change it. Paroperative is for the plan the initially the graft. Then you might have paroperative. You might need to change the plan. So, person who is set to the one or two procedures, there they should not be doing the hypospadias surgery and the zirconia. So, that's a variety of procedures we have to do. Then, before the coming to the so, doctor, the year comes the sterilization. If we are uh, performing surgery with the old one year, one year uh, old retrogram, then we should make some. Uh, This, this is the outcome of this. this we will do a fresh ultrasound, maybe two weeks before, one month before, before or one week before. Then we should go for surgery. Here comes the sterilization. Right. Sure. After your offering, may I have no which place to take it? I think. Flexible sisters go back to that local town. You see, uh, it has been a battle, at least for me, because. This was a subject which was given to one of my candidates. He was doing a sumo yoga diet, and Manjusa was with me. So, topic in that matter was for six months. I have to fight two persons. One 
one Sajid Sulman from nowhere and the other one is uh, Fight. Just to make them understand what we we mean by doing uh, this thing, uh, Soma Yudh program. But in Mushkil Se Jaake Wo Samjhe Ke Hem Karna Ke Ja. So it is very difficult for you to make all these things available. If you uh, do some again uh, thinking and research, there is another way of looking at uh, the structure portion by means of 3D modeling or not the whole structure. So that should be at the back of your mind always. Maybe it's not there for the next five years, maybe it will be available to you in 10 years' time. But this is something which uh, involves less amount of. Uh, Radiation, for instance, no involvement of contrast mediums, but there is a software which has to be installed within the uh, ultrasound machine, and it is always guided by the ultrasound. It gives you a very good picture, not only the length of the urethra, not only the length of the suture, but the whole configuration of the urethra in three dimensions, meaning to say the whole fish shape. So, uh, if you read that article, I can give you that article that was published. Uh, in December 2018, in general of urology. So, I will tell you, it's a mathematical model, but it is applicable and it is available. So, we can move forward towards the practice. I will tell you, I will tell you, I will tell you, this is a clinic hack, this is one of the oldest clinic hacks we all know. It was started by Dr. Sivisby, and he used to call it dilatation. He used to call it dilatation. He was very fond of So, metallic dilatation, that was the only treatment, and we used to do the liquid therapy for that dilatation. And it must be painful at that time. So, in the company of the 70s, and the 2000s, after 2020, the dilatation is this long. About 30, 35 patients are injured for dilatation. So, the main objective of me joining this dilatation clinic was to stop this dilatation. I could not do that. This will be maybe two common pain, I think. But I failed to convince these patients that we don't go for dilatation, we will give you something better. Like euthoplasty can give uh, more than 90% pure rate if done properly. So I, I beg to convince them that uh, okay, we do your euthogram and we offer you another better treatment. But the historical patient, they are not taking uh, So any any of our youngsters that they can take it as a project just to stop this symmetrical <laughs> <laughs> possible. And we can go for CIC. That's a necessary problematic. But uh, and one thing more I must request the youngsters who are doing the uh, emergency uh, HM4 that if you pass a catheter, if patient comes in detention, if you pass a catheter and if you fail to pass a catheter, then don't do the blind and please. Because that can make the things worse. And as a urologist, we must respect the menu. Because once you injure it, it it's a whole life. Uh, from here, so don't do blind dilatation. If you, if dilatation is necessary, then you do under the end. Okay, under sister smoke, guide wire, and then. So please don't do the blind dilatation. It can end up with the any disaster for whole life. So this is my and do super -pitting. If you cannot pass the catheter, do super -pitting. Don't do that. See, one one comment from me is that uh, I have. Part of the institute team for very short, for short period, around three to four months. I worked in Pakistan. Uh, your main complication you have uh, shown is erectile dysfunction. So in that time, we used to perform a that uh, we used to record pre-op erectile dysfunction, and then we used to compare it to post-op whether it is improving or deteriorating. So I hope that practice would be still uh, be in practice. If this is in practice, then you should uh, give us a different number. Because 50% of the people from get dysfunction, whether this is from their primary disease, or uh, whether this is the result of the surgery you are performing.
we we have such three performance uh, one is the, the, one was the, uh, based on this presentation second is we are doing the ief score pre uh, pre operatively and post operatively and then we've come up with the th third one which is under research work that is the urethral severity score so these three uh, perform these uh, in addition to the uh, ief we we'll, we've also started off with the urethral severity score so we are in in process of progression but uh, we're trying to see uh, how how advantages that uh, it is in our setup because we would we are now thinking of embarking on the treatment of uh, erectile dysfunction as re and rehabilitation so that's very important but my point is you should check pre-op and post-op post -op, yes. so then you are going to have a valid part in your uh, skill uh, and then you are uh, reading bipolar so, uh, the, the need of the bipolar is very uh, severe or uh,
So it's 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 a great thing for all audit clinics especially. ये हमें अपने बारे में भी पता चल रहा है कि हम कर क्या रहे हैं और उसको किस तरीके से इंप्रूव कर सकते हैं। तो सर इसको मौसल सर चलाए हैं। मैंने बिल्कुल ये बोले ऐसा सामना है कि सोमवार को ब्लाइंड डायरेक्शन के लिए आवाज़ है। तो इट इट यू नो जवान डायरेक्शन एंड अपॉर्चुनिटी टू सिल्ड डिसीज बाय एक 